Hey guys, back again with the Let's Code It series, where we're basically going to be looking across YouTube in a hunt for a good strategy, and we're going to code it into MQL, and I'll share the coding process so that we can also learn MQL5. And basically by coding, we take out any subjective human element from the application of the strategy. And this way we are sure when we are testing it, we know that the results are following the rules 100%. So today we're going to be looking at the 76% win rate, highly profitable trading strategy by TradePro. And it has around 240,000 views already. So let's get to Meta Editor and start coding. So here we are in Meta Editor and let's go create a new template and we will call it 76% win rate highly profitable trading strategy here we have the template and I'll clean it up so we're left with initialization function all the codes here are going to be run on the start of the year deinitialization all the codes here are going to be run on the stopping of the year and on tick which all the codes are here are going to be run on every tick in MQL now let's get to the strategy and I'll leave the link in the description uh, and you can go check out the strategy by from Trade Pro in their video. Basically, it's three different EMAs, 8, 14 and 50 EMA. And they're supposed to be for a buy condition. 8 is supposed to be above the 14, which is above the 50. And then on the close of a candle, what we check is that there is a crossover on the stochastic RSI of the K line crossing over the D line from below to up. If that happens, which happens here on this candle, then we open the trade on the next candle and we set the take profit to two times the ATR. And we set the stop loss to three times the ATR. This is what the strategy is. You can go check out more details if you want in the link below. So let's get to coding. And I always like to put the rules of the strategy in on top of the EMA so that I can always refer back to it. You can pause the video and read them if you want, but we'll, in order to keep the video short, below 15 minutes, I'll continue coding. First thing first, because we're gonna be engaging in trading operations, so we need to reference to the trade slash trade.mqh file and use the variable type C trade, and I'm calling it trade. I have a set, if you don't understand any of these codes or want to know more details, then you can check out my how to series as well, which is a playlist where I talk about these in more details, one topic at a time. Here to save time, I'll just continue. The next thing we're going to need is we're going to need handles for our indicators. And in MQL5, you basically create the handles as an integer. So I'm creating a handle for EMA8, EMA14, EMA50 then one handle for stochastic RSI and one handle for ATR. These are the ones that we're going to need. And in order to copy the values from these handles into our variables that we're going to create later, I'm going to create a double uh, variable and call it indicator buffer. And it's an array so I can store more than one value in it. Again, more details in the how to series if you're interested. Next, we're going to need some inputs from the user. And what we need from the user is the time frame, and I'm keeping it to period current. So whichever chart you're gonna apply it on, that will be the time frame for the year, but can be changed at least in the inputs. Then we need a magic number from the user, and I'm putting it to 823 to uniquely identify this EA. So all the trades are, we can identify which trades this EA. I have separate videos in the how to series on magic numbers. And then I'm going to, instead of using a lot size, I'm here asking the user how much risk do you want to take per trade? And I'm setting it to 2%. So on every trade, we're going to be taking 2% risk of the capital. I have a, a video in the how to series on, on, on how this, this, the calculation of the lot size under risk as a percentage uh, per trade works. Now that we have the magic number, we need to set the magic number for the EA so that we can identify every trade this EA places by putting a magic number into the set expert magic number. Then we need to initialize our handles for the EMAs. And this is how we initialize the handles by assigning to every one of these handles a function. So for example, to EMA8, I'm saying it's a moving average on current symbol, on current time frame, eight periods, starting at zero bar and it's an EMA with a price median so high low divided by two 
the same way I set it for 14 period and 50 period. Then we need to set one for the ATR. So I'm saying handle ATR is IATR or for the current symbol for the current time frame and 14 periods. Now here things become interesting because MQ, M meta, meta, uh, meta Trader 5 and MQL5 does not have a stochastic RSI indicator. So we need to create it. So you head to MQL5 website and I'll leave the link in the description. There are freely available indicators. One of them is stock RSI for MetaTrader 5 and it gives you the K line and the D line. So we're going to use this one. The way to do it, open up the view. And once you have that, you basically want to copy everything. Come back to Meta Editor. In the indicator, we're going to create a custom folder, which I've already created. Then you're going to go new and then it's going to be a custom indicator. You can call it a stock RSI. And then we just go and we select everything, delete it. And then we paste everything that we have copied and compile. No errors. So now we have the indicator as well in MQL. To check it, you can come back to Meta MetaTrader. And here you see under the custom, you have the stock RSI now that we have created. If you pull it, you need to provide these values 3, 3, 14, 14, and on a close price. And we're going to use these values in our EA as well. And when you apply it, you see the stochastic is working. Now back again to Meta Editor. And now we can create our handle because now we have the indicator. And this we're going to set as I custom because it's a custom way, it's a custom indicator on current symbol, on current time frame. And then you have to provide it the, the path and we have stored it in custom slash stock RSI. And in MQL, you have to provide double backslashes. So it's custom backslash backslash stock RSI. So we provide the path. And then like we saw, we have to provide period. So the, the variables or the inputs for the indicator, which was 3, 3, 14, 14 and close price. So we provide that as well here. So now we have set up all of our handles. As a good practice on the deinitialization, when the EA is stopping, you want to release all of these handles. So I have five handles and I'm releasing them here. Now, before we start writing our codes into the on tick function, I because I only want to check for conditions on the opening of a bar. So I'm going to create a function which is going to check whether or not it's a new bar. I have a video in the MQL how to series which explains it more. But here is the code for that. And because I want to calculate the lot size based on percentage of risk that I want to take, I'm creating this function here to calculate the lot size as well. I have a video in MQL how to on, on explaining this more and how to do this. So now that we have these two functions, we can go on to the on tick function. And I'm going to start with. So we start with if it's not a new bar, then return. So if it's not a new bar, then exit the function Do not run the codes below. So when I call this function, it's going to check here if it's a new bar. If it's, an, if it's not a new bar, then it's going to just exit the function and not run anything below. So every code here below is going to be run only on a new bar. Then we need to start populating our EMA variables. So we basically copy uh, from the handle uh, to the variable EMA that I'm creating here, calling it double. And the function I'm using is copy buffer. Another video in MQL how to series on how to do it which is copying the, the value from the handle EMA8 into the variable that I've created, indicator buffer, and from indicator buffer, then we are passing on the information to EMA8 variable. Same for 14 and 50 using their respective handles. Then we do this for ATR. And then lastly for our custom function. So this one is slightly different, so I'll explain it, which is on copy buffer, I'm copying from a stochastic, but I'm copying the first line, which is going to be the K line. And I'm copying two values, so the previous bar and previous from previous bar. And I'm passing it onto the array buffer indicator buffer, so it's going to have two values. And because it has two values, then I use array set as series to true so that they are, they are properly sequenced. So the, the first value is in place one and the second value is in place two. 
and then I pass on the value to line kx1 variable that I'm creating and line kx2. So line k1, x1 will have the value on the last bar and x2 will have it on the last from last bar. I do the same for the second line, the D line, which is going to be the, the, the line. So the buffer number zero and then the buffer number one. So the buffer number one is going to be the, the D line. And I have a video on explaining this more into the how to series. So go check it out. And then I pass on the two because I'm getting two values. So I'm passing the first value to line dx1 and then the second one to line dx2. So this one will have the value of the last bar and this one will have the value of the last from last bar. Then I'm going to go create an MQL tick variable and call it current tick. And I copy the value of the tick, the last tick or the current tick into this by using the symbol in for tick uh, function i'm copying the value of the tick on mql into the variable that i've created as current tick and this basically opens up a lot of possibilities to basically ask date time volume and other kind of things so now that we have everything that we need to start checking the conditions for y and cell let's start let's go ahead and check the by condition so for a buy, what we need to have is EMA 8 is above EMA 14, EMA 14 is above EMA 50, and then we're using the current tick dot ask. So the ask or the price in the market is above the EMA 8, and then the line K, which was in the strategy, so the line K in the last from last bar was below the line D, and then the line K in the last bar is above the line D of the last bar. And additionally, I'm checking that the total number of positions at this point in time is less than one. So there is no open position. If all of that is true, then we can go ahead and open a buy. And in order to open the buy, we first need the entry. So we define it as a double and we say current price ask is the entry. The stop loss is entry minus ATR times three, according to strategy. TP is above the so entry plus ATR times two. And then we can calculate the lot by using the, the calculate calculate lot function that we have created here and saying well calculate the loss based on the entry minus the stop loss distance once we have the lots then we can open up the trade by using the c trade function trade that we had created earlier and saying trade dot buy and passing on the information on lots current symbol entry is the price stop loss tp and any comment you want the reverse is true for sell, where EMA 8 is below 14, 14 is below 50, the current tick bid is less than EMA 8, so price is below the EMA 8, and the line crosses over to the other side, and then there is no position open. And here we're going to use again the entry is the bid, times 3 there is the stop loss, but plus entry, meaning it's above, and TP is entry minus ATR, so it's below. And the lot size will then have to be calculated at stop loss minus entry because the stop loss is bigger than the entry let's compile it to see if there are any issues no errors so let's go ahead and run it there we go so here we have the three emas and the stochastic and atr and i'll pause the video when we have the first open trade and here we have the first open trade where ema8 is below the EMA 14 is below the EMA 50 and if you look very very closely we can probably find that there is a small crossover to the ups to the downside here so here there was a crossover from above to below on this candle so this candle had the blue line above and this candle had the blue line below so on the next candle we open up a trade ATR three times the ATR is the stop loss and below uh, if I zoom out we have two times the ATR as the take profit. Let's run the trade. And it goes and hits the take profit, I think, or it's trying. So we have the take profit. And then we have the second trade here. And then I'm waiting for a, a buy trade. And we here we had the buy trade. Let's look at it. Here we had the EM8 above 14, above 50. And we had a crossover here and this is why there's a trade here and the, all these three trades have ended up in profit but i'm running out of time so 
please go ahead, write the code, check it yourself, run the test and see how it goes. So until next time, ciao.